Hi guys, uh, this is DFS Chance coming to you early in the morning to talk about today's uh, LOL two game slate. I know we have um, we haven't had a lot of League of Legends slates um, for many different reasons. For example, uh, LPL in China has been hit with COVID, um, so they have postponed the playoffs there. LCK is over with T1 winning the championship. And then in the LEC and LCS in Europe and uh, in North America here in the US uh, respectively, we have the playoffs going on and this is an exciting weekend uh, for uh, those two regions. Um, so we have a two game slate today, uh, one in the LEC and one in the LCS. Um, so yeah, let's dive in. LEC, it's Fnatic uh, versus G2. Fnatic is a slight favorite at minus 189. And G2 is uh, an underdog at plus 137. Um, and then on, in the LCS here, Cloud9 is a huge favorite at minus 400, which I agree with um, the odds. I don't think C9 is going to lose today in the best of five series, especially. Um, better team tends to win, just like in the NBA in the best of seven. It's kind of a similar analogy. Better team always wins. Uh, but best team, you know, typically wins um, in most scenarios. I mean, Golden Guardians is a huge underdog at plus 275. So let's talk about the closer. Well, let's look at the C9 versus GG um, in the LCS. I think we can kind of just talk about it briefly uh, because, like I said, I think Cloud9 should really roll over Golden Guardians. Um, I really do think um, just like looking at the roster comparison and looking at the match history, I know Cloud9 has kind of fooled around in the last like two, three games, um, you know, toward the last part of the regular spring split season. Um, but I just feel like in a best of five series, they will get, get it together. This is a playoff time. C9 always shows up in the playoff time, in my opinion, um, especially with this new roster. I think they're, they've had some time to gel together um, throughout the regular uh, spring season split. So really, I, I like C9 here, um, especially in the top lane. I think Summit's going to do really well. I mean, he's been really a dark. He's been, a, he's been the engine of Cloud9, in my opinion. I know Fudge was a huge acquisition, um, you know, just a splash, uh, you know, according to, uh, you know, many websites. But Summit has been the big difference, in my opinion for Cloud9. And frankly, I think that's where the biggest gap is today um, in the top lane. And then, you know, in jungle, Blabber has been playing well. Um, I think he is going to dominate uh, in that jungle position as well. And then Golden Guardians really doesn't have much to uh, um, compete against in the top half of the map. And especially in the mid lane, I know uh, Blaze Olive um, has been playing okay. Uh, but I just feel like Fudge is a whole another, you know, huge upgrade over a Blaze Olive, in my opinion. So I just feel like, I don't know, man. I think this is going to be a struggle um, for Golden Guardians. Let's look at the last head to head. Um, as, as you can see, I mean, even just in 2022, they played three games and Cloud9 won every single one of them. Uh, so even in a best of five series last year, uh, Cloud9 beat them 3-0. I don't think it's going to be 3-0. I think it's going to be 3-1 uh, at the end of the day. So I'm going to uh, just, you know, keep my words here. C C9 wins 3-1 or 3-0. I mean, I can definitely see 3-0 too, but C9 has shown some inconsistencies later in this later part in the season. Um, so I do think that can happen. They can maybe take a loss, but then they'll refocus and, you know, win the rest of the games. But like I said, I mean, Fudge over a Blaze Olive and then Summit in the top lane over Licorice uh, and then Blabber over Pride. I mean, Pride has been okay. He's coming over from uh, EU Masters, but I really like Blabber today. Um, I think Blabber would make a great captain probably. Um, in a best of five series, I think there will be a game, even or two games, where he could totally carry and rack up some kills early game and then carry a game or two. I can definitely see that. Um, and I can also see Summit doing that as well. Fudge, like, it, but unlike most mid laners, he's not like a type of mid laner who, like, who loves to get kills and kind of snowball from there. He's more of a, a very smart a player who 
you know, like he's more of a team team player, right? Like he he's not one of those assassin minded players. He wants to get like 10, 15 kills a game. Um, I think he's he's more happy that his team wins. Um, he's he does whatever is needed for his team. So really, I mean, even from the utility role like that, though, I think he can rack a bunch of assists. So it can happen. But in a best of five, kills are so much more important than assists, in my opinion. Um, really, for DFS purposes, uh, in a best of five, you really need to get a good amount of kills to be able to uh, fit, in, fit into the optimal lineup. So for that reason, I think I'm going to prefer Flapper, Summit, and obviously Berserker. I've, I've seen Berserker carry the game or two. I think that bottom lane will be an interesting one because Berserker and Winsome have been okay, um, have been good, but not great. Um, you know, like like those the top half of the line, uh, map, like I said, for C9. Um, I think they're going to, I mean, they're still going to win against Lost and Ole, I think. Um, but still, I think that's going to be an interesting matchup in the bottom lane. I don't think they're going to, even if they, let's say, lose the lane, I don't think they're going to, like, feed the bottom lane uh, for Golden Guardians. So I think it's going to be, I really don't see many winning paths for Golden Guardians. Let's put it that way. So anyway, so yeah, if I were to make a captain um, a player recommendation, probably Blabber, Berserker, and Summit. I think Fudge will be interesting. Like I said, I think he's going to be a hit or hit or miss today. Um, I actually prefer Summit over Fudge and, you know, between those two. And even if Summit's a top laner and traditionally, you know, mid laner score better than top laner. Um, but I don't know, in this case, I have a feeling that Fudge will try to play a more of a utility role uh, for to help the team win, just like he has been doing for the rest of the split. So yeah, I think C9 is gonna win. Um, and then let's see, Fnatic versus G2. Like I said, this is gonna be more of a toss up match. I have Fnatic winning um, in a best of five. I think Fnatic has been more of a consistent team, in my opinion. I know they just lost to Rogue, but Rogue played out of their mind, especially their jungler Ma Rang for Rogue. I mean, he played out of his mind uh, in that best of five series, and they barely squeaked it out. I think that series between Rogue and Fnatic could have gone either way, in my opinion. Just watching that last game and then the game four, I mean, I think it really could have gone either way, like I said. So Fnatic coming off of that tough, tough series loss, I think they're going to bounce back very much, get very well against G2. I think, you know, just given the regular season matchup here, you see, um, even in the best of five series, Fnatic beat G2 three to one. I think it's going to be hard to beat um, on the same team with, you know, the same uh, results like that. But at the same time, Fnatic is, you know, I think G2, um, I think Fnatic matches very well, let's put it that way. Um, I know G2 has been pretty hot coming off of the wins against Vitality and then Misfits, but I don't think it was really um, testament to G2's like form. I think G2 has been playing well, but not like how top esports has been playing, like rolling over teams, right? Really, I've seen so many mistakes from Team Vitality and then so many mistakes from Misfits last game. So just, I think it's more of a knock on the Vitality and Misfits, the teams that they lost, uh, teams that lost to G2, in my opinion. I think it really helped G2 kind of, you know, make them look better on paper, like 3-0, 3-0, that looks great. But, you know, if you watch the game actually, Really, Misfits and Vitality, both of them in, in their respective games, gave a lot of, um, you know, gave a lot of leads away, gave a lot of mistakes away uh, to G2, which helped G2, you know, win pretty, pretty easily, in my opinion. So I think Fnatic, so in other words, I, I don't think Fnatic is going to make that those kind of same mistakes like Misfits and Vitality. Um, I think uh, G2's ownership will be more popular um than they would have been if they like won three to two or three to one against either of these two teams um but i think the odds are closer because g2 has been in great form so to speak um just looking at the results but i really do think just after watching the game um really it was not you know uh you know uh toward g2 skills that that, that the results point to it's re really more of the opponent's mistakes that that, that they were able to benefit from so really, I think Fnatic is going to, you know, do really well here, do really well here. I think Fnatic is going to win three to one. Um, 
here. I think Fnatic, just like I said, matches up really well. If you see here, I'll point out um, the lane matchup here. Um, I think in the top lane is the only one that I'm concerned about for uh, for Fnatic. I think Wonder is okay, but Broken Blaze has been playing out of his mind. Um, I think in order for Fnatic to win, I think they're going to have to make sure that Broken Blade does not have a free free reign, you know, of, you know, uh, getting kills, racking up kills in the top lane and roaming around, making plays, helping his teammates, um, you know, lane easier. So I just think, I just think the top lane is probably the only path that G2 um, has, um, you know, to kind of dominate the series and all that. Um, Cause I do think Broken Blade is better than Wonder. But in every single other lane, though, I, I like Resort over Yankos. Yankos has been playing well. Um, I think he's had a resurgent um, season this split. But Resort has been very solid and consistent. Um, I think that's more of a wash. Um, I do think Resort is more of a, an aggressive jungler compared to Yankos. Um, Yankos likes to play around his teammates, whereas Resort um, is more aggressive in invading the other, uh, court, uh, other team's jungler and all that. So I do think I like that better in a best of five series because, you know, that obviously, you know, puts a lot of pressure on the other teams, not only jungle uh, jungler, but also other uh, laners. Um, so I do think resort uh, if play style favors the best of five, in my opinion, much uh, better than Yanko's. And then in the mid lane, I know people rave about caps and have been raving about caps the last like two series in the playoffs. But I just think Humanoid has been really well, really, really good too. I think that's going to be a very good matchup, but I actually favor Humanoid in that regard because Caps really has shown me some inconsisten inconsistencies in the regular season. So I really think Humanoid, you know, can win that matchup. And then in the, in the um, bottom lane, I think this is where, um, this is where I think experience will come in handy. Um, I think Upset and Hillisang, I think they're going to, you know, based on their experience and their respective careers, um, I think they're going to be much more experienced than Flax and Targamas. Um, I think that that really bottom la lane matchup is the reason why I think um, Fnatic is going to win, along with the jungler uh, position. Um, so I do think Upset and Hillisang has a little bit of edge over Flax and Targamas, but... Like I said, I think G2 looks good on paper, 3-0, 3-0 um, in their last two series in the playoffs. But I just feel like Fnatic has shown me the same thing. I mean, they beat G2. They beat um, Rogue twice in the best of five, and they could have won that series. So anyway, so that's all I got for you guys today. Um, I do have both favorites winning. Um, even though G2 will be popular, I, I think it's an underdog. I mean, I think, I think a lot of people will play C9, Fnatic, C9, G2, stacks. Um, I do think in terms of the kill upside, I think Fnatic, G2 will be a uh, higher kill upside, just given how they play um, but, uh, for both Fnatic and G2. Um, I think C9 and C9 plays really slow. Uh, they like to dictate the pace of the game as well. So I just feel like, you know, if you think C9 wins, which most people will agree, I think it's going to be a much of a lower scoring matchup where it's going to finish like 12 to 4, 12 to 6 or something like that. You know, 12 kills or 12 between 12 to 15 kills. I just don't see a game where between C9 and Golden Guardians where they're going to score like over 25, 30 kills. Right. And, but I definitely see that that can happen between Fnatic and G2. So I do think the LEC, the European matchup, will be higher in kills upside in my opinion. So I would definitely consider them as a long stack versus a uh, short stack in the North American game between C9 and G2, uh, GG, Golden Guardians rather. Um, so yeah, anyway, so that's all I got for you guys today. If you guys have any questions or if you guys want to chat League of Legends, um, obviously, as you can tell, I'm excited to talk about League again. Hopefully, um, I think the LPL comes back next week. And then, um, like I said, the LCK is over. Um, but LPL comes back next week and then LEC and LCS playoffs will continue throughout next week as well. So hopefully DraftKings or FanDuel makes, um, you know, a little bit of bigger slate and then also a bigger prize pool contest for these. But then before you know it, the summer split will be here. So we'll be back to the usual, you know, uh, four game, five game slate on the weekend toward the weekend. So that's going to be exciting. But for now, we it's a playoff time for the spring split. 
Um, we're also going to have an MSI um, season before the summer split, I believe. Yeah, before the summer split, um, where at, you know where those top um, teams from each region, like for for instance, T1 from LCK will be the representative of the Korea of Korea, and then you know whoever wins the LPL, LEC, LTS. And some other regions will, you know, whoever wins those, uh, you know, wins those leagues respectively will be coming to play in this mid-season mid invitational MSI mat, uh, tournament. Um, it's kind of like a pre-World Cup, a pre-World, you know, in the mid-season uh, to kind of just to kind of see what, you know, what they're all about, kind of test out their each, each other's skills, test out, you know, what each other looks like. Um, so that's going to be an exciting tournament to look at, look out for. And then accordingly, I think DraftKings for DFS purposes will have some slates on that um, tournament as well. So that's it's a very exciting time. But if you guys have any questions, other, you know, like I said, reach out to me on uh, Twitter, YouTube, or on Discord, most importantly. And if you like the video, please hit the like button. And then if you uh, want to subscribe to watch other videos, other sports, please uh, hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much. I hope you guys... Uh, Win some money today and have a good one. See ya.